And so finally we get to the Cupid Parasite merch from the Western Idea Factory. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when I saw pictures of the Cupid Parasite stand, I was like, oh my god. Hello everyone! It's Lily, and today I'm going to be doing a show and tell video of my Otome merch. Uh, basically, I'll be going through like the ones I'm like, ah, to the ones I'm like, ah, to, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, before I start, if you like VNs, if you like Otome games, and if you like just fangirling over 2D guys, then you've come to the right place because I upload one a week. And uh, yeah, if you subscribe and click that notification button, you will not regret it. But anyway, let me start. So, um, yeah, I'll go through the... I'll start from, like, the less exciting, and then I'll go through, like, a couple of non-Otome merch, and then at the end, I'll finish with um, Otome merch that was recently sold by Idea Factory, uh, like, you know, Europe and uh, US, which is kind of, like, very surprising. But I, I don't know. I think that's got the most hype, so I'm going to leave that until the very end. But anyway, let me first start with the bromide. So... Although I like bromides, I'm aware that some people aren't as hyped about them because just just simply because I guess like I don't know. I don't know why because they don't take much space, which is great for someone like me that lives in a small flat. But anyway, this one is Charado Maniaksu. Um he is my favorite character actually and it's kind of lucky because uh, one of my uh, friends uh, managed to get one of these I think like as a freebie or like as something that comes with us alongside something if you uh, buy some merch and um, it happens to be my favorite character and I thought it was lucky. Uh, Charado Maniacs is a game where you've got the main character who gets isekai'd into like this weird place and is forced alongside nine other people to kind of enact dramas like they have a script and they have to on the spot act in like this setup drama and it's um you know it sounds really fun but also if you don't like agree with the director or producer and like you go against them and you don't act then you get punished so you can say no but that there are like severe consequences and I'm like talking really severe so it's very suspenseful not to mention amongst the nine love interests is a betrayer of the actual director that brought you into this world of torment I suppose um so it's always like among us where you're like always wondering who the betrayer is and um yeah, I, I, every single person has something very suspicious about them. Like, for example, this guy, I think, was suspicious because he kind of gives off this, like, I care about you and I'm, like, it's like older brother guy and, like, kind of, you know, very caring. So you think in these games, you're like, hmm, well, you know, the most suspicious person is a red herring, so that, I mean, I'm not gonna say who was and was not, because, like, the fun of it is figuring out for yourself, but that was the reason why this guy was suspicious, because, you know, they all had reasons of being suspicious, and I don't know, I guess looks-wise, I just really liked him, and I think, also, I was somewhat biased in the sense that, um, I... When I went to Japan a couple of years ago, I got one of those like mystery bags where it's like in aluminium foil, you don't know what you're gonna get. But I I kind of owned Shout Out the Maniacs at the time. I hadn't played it, but I knew that I would probably really enjoy it, so I decided to buy a key ring. And um, this is the guy that I just happened to get. Uh, he's called Hutami Ryoichi. And um Yeah, so I'm probably biased in that I like the way he looked anyway, but I was also kind of like I don't know, I wanted to like him since I've got a key ring of him, if you know what I mean. So, uh, that's that. Now, the other bromides I have is of Shu and the Virushu, because, uh, that's my favourite game. Um, and you've got these, this bromide with, like, chibis on it. Oh my god, so you've got Seresu. Um, Shu and the Virushu is this game where you've got the main character who has this curse whereby whenever she hangs out with anyone it seems that they end up like basically dying or bad things happen to them so people are obviously scared of her and it's really sad 
Not to mention, it's all based in this world where everyone has a maximum lifespan of like 23 years or something. So it's it's like basically the whole game is just depressing. And, you know, you actually have to do the bad endings. Like you have to complete all the bad endings before you can even see the salvation ending. And even that salvation ending, you could argue isn't really like a good like happily ever after it's more like a like some of them are but some of them it's like that's just bittersweet like that's not happy at all so <laughs> it's a game not for the faint-hearted i was not affected too much by it because it's like a fantasy sci-fi setting so i didn't really feel like it was real because the games that hit harder the ones that feel realistic and you can sort of empathize the situation whereas this is so fantastical and like sci-fi that to me it just was like a fairy tale so but yeah those are the little chibi characters he's my favorite he's yuka sama followed by probably eve um however i think a lot of people like xian the most which is understandable because looks wise he's probably one of the most attractive ones and at the beginning I thought he'd be my favorite too although he turned out to be in my opinion a little bit boring but I'm probably gonna get roasted for saying that <laughs> these are the other two as you can tell I'm obsessed with um Shu and the virus uh you've got this one I find this one kind of funny because Eve looks so creepy like why does he look like a creep <laughs> I don't know. like I don't even know what's going on there and that's Xi'an the one that a lot of people like um, and this is the other one. Uh, this has, you know, Eve and it has Luca. So it's got like two of my favorite characters in there. Um, it's unfortunate that I don't have the one with Anku in it, but I, I'm probably going to try and get my hands on that at some point. So those are the Brumides. Okay, next up is, I would say, okay, this. So... It's not that I don't like it. I I got I, I like it because it's um you know limited to Kyoto. You can get it in Kyoto basically. As you can tell, it's got the Inari Jinja and like the Torii that you have to kind of you can go under, and it's it's a very pretty but incredibly touristy location. And um, I think I really like it because you know of that. And I like how it's like round edges because that's something I really like in merch when they have like rounded edges. But it's not of my favourite character. I don't mind Harada. Um, I think he's sweet, but I think he's just a bit too sweet. Like he's just kind of cute. And I, I like a little bit of something weird in a character to um, particularly like them. So, uh, I mean, I like it. I'm not gonna use it. I'm always very like opposed to using much because I don't want it to get too scratched and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I like it. It's just like not my favorite, if you know what I mean. And some of you are probably like, what are you talking about, Luli? It's Harada, my favorite, but yeah. Okay, now next up, and I'm gonna get roasted for this, but oh, and can I just say, this is from Hakuoki, um, a game, sorry, I wanted to, like, explain each one just so that you guys know who they're fr from, but, um, it's from Hakuoki, a game based on a bunch of warriors known as the Shinsengumi, and, um, it's really depressing because, you know, there's a lot of, like, fighting, and they're in wars, and some of them die, obviously, um, I haven't played, uh, all the characters, so, I haven't encountered one yet like I've only played Kyoto wins which is the first half so I haven't like encountered any deaths quite yet but I'm kind of expecting it if it goes by like historical accuracy if you know what I mean so I'm just, uh, I, don't really, I want to play it but I also don't want to because I'm I'm already traumatized from when I played this game um and it was like my first ever Tommy game which made things just so much worse now Next up, and this is the one where you, some of you are going to roast me because I know there are so many fans of Sasazuka out there. Um, I love this because it's a Halloween edition. It's got, you know, like little ghosts and like bats and like lollipops and like cookies. And I think it's adorable. But the thing is, I don't really like Sasazuka. And as I said, some of you gonna, guys are going to be like, what? But I love Sasazuka. How dare you say that? But like, the thing is... The issue I have with him is he's like a yappy chihuahua because he's like short and he constantly, and I don't care about the height, it's not so much that, it's just more, he's constantly telling the main character how stupid she is. And I just, as someone who has intelligence complex, that's the last thing I need. Like the last thing I need 
is a love interest constantly telling you how dumb you are when you're not even being dumb. Like, that's the worst part. And the problem is he's like this computer whiz and he's like super smart or whatever. But like, the thing is, I don't care. <laughs> he's a tomboy and I normally like tomboys, but he's not the right kind of tomboy. He's just mean from the start. So uh, that's why he's not a favorite. However, I understand that there are a lot of fans of him out there. So, you know, fair enough because everyone likes different characters. I personally like Okazaki the most. Um, but anyway, Call of Malice is a game in which you've got this main character who's a policewoman, but one day she gets kidnapped and there's this collar that's placed on her, which has like some sort of poison, I think, in it. It's basically put on her by Adonis, which is a terrorist group that's terrorizing Shinjuku at the time, which is like cornered off. Um, the they're sort of like, uh, we don't, you know, don't tell anyone about this collar. If you do, you know, we'll kill you immediately. Um, I can't remember how, but she somehow manages to tell like this small group of like, basically detectives, I guess, about it. And they all sort of gone like their little investigation of finding out who Adonis is and who like the culprit is. And um, it's definitely one of my favorite games in that each route reveals a little puzzle piece almost of Adonis because it follows particular terrorist members and um, it's really interesting learning about their life and stuff and I don't know I thought the the moment you find out the truth and it all comes together is just such a satisfying feeling so it's definitely one of my favorite games but Sasazuka is from that as I said I like this key ring because of you know the Halloween theme just I wish he wasn't Sasazuka and he was o Okazaki or something but hey that's just personal preference and that's the kind of risk you take when you open up mystery bags um next up is these two now it's not that I the thing is I think the reason why I'm not so I like the, the sort of basically you've got like a little pin but it's also a clip um and i really like these i like the designs i think they're cute but the only issue is i don't firstly this is uh right on he's like a serious pervert he's oh, he's got issues i mean they've all got issues but this guy has issues like pervy issues and i mean I guess one thing is that I like his voice actor. Like, his voice actor is probably one of my favorites. So, um, in that sense, I like him. Just, uh, he's just so pervy. And then as for Kadada, I don't even, like, I haven't even played his route yet. So, I don't know what he's like. I just know he's he seems, like, super cool at end and super, like, stern and that's not necessarily my thing so who knows i might end up liking him but the fact that i don't know him obviously decreases my um attachment to this particular merch <laughs> but yeah th these are from a game called uh, diabolic lovers which is about a main character that gets uh, taken by uh this like father of loads of vampire boys and um for various reasons and uh like they're so messed up in the head they're all they're all extreme sadists they bully the hell out of yui the main character honestly if abuse is a huge no-no to you don't play this game because it's just yeah it's just so messed up basically think of anything abusive that a guy can do these guys will do it so <laughs> although i find it interesting because i'm not i'm fortunate enough that it doesn't affect me um, oh yeah, these, these are cute. I really like these. Again, it's a case of I really love the game and I love the merch, but the characters aren't quite what, you know, they're not my favourites. I still adore these though because they're so cute. Ah, I'm almost dropping them. Um, so it's from Keep the Parasite, which is like one of my favourite games. Um, I swear I've said that about everything, but I guess that's why you buy merch from that game, right? Because you like them so much. Um, Gil and Yuki are not necessarily my favourites. I still like their characters because they were funny. But like, I don't know. I don't know. That I think I think in Otome games, hype probably actually does play a big role for me. You know, actually. Um, the ones I tend to like are too. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Cupid Parasite, I don't really have a favourite anyway. But don't you think the ribbons are so cute? This is another merch that my friend sent over to me she got doubles so you know I was lucky enough that she sent them and 
they are just so cute. They're like, they're key rings and, but like, look at them. Just, oh my God. So yeah, I really like these there, you know. Yeah, I look at them and they make me smile. <laughs> so that's Cupid Parasite key rings. Um, yeah, I'll, sh I'll sh show these next. So this, these two are my big stands. This is from the game, um, called Amnesia. This Kai is no question my favourite character in that game and for those who know, you'll know why. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just, just everything about him, just yeah, he's great. Uh, Amnesia is a game about the main character. I swear every time I explain a game it just starts with about this main character. <laughs> um, but she's lost all her memories, as you can imagine from the title Amnesia, and um, basically it's the whole game is about her waking up and going, oh crap, I need to hide the fact that I've got memory loss or they're going to shove me in a hospital or whatever. Um, and you've got like three or two, I can't remember what parameters, I think Tormaz was a pain in the butt, so I had to actually use a walkthrough, but um, you've got these parameters that you have to keep high or low, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a good game, it, it, they do a really good job in giving this eerie feeling that you can't remember and you can't trust anyone, because you don't know who you know, knows what you're going through and, and it's just, it gives you that sense of paranoia and I think it's a great game to play in uh, summer because it, the, the amount of creepiness you get from it. And in Japan, you say, we say that, you know, you want to play games and watch movies and read manga that are scary because that feeling of being scared gives you the shivers like it has a cold you know coldness go down your spine or whatever um it's kind of like the thing so like anything that's creepy or scary is something you want to play during summer and amnesia is set during summer so it's a great summer game and i played it during summer as well but this is the stand and it's kind of cute because it's got like the base is a little uh rose anyway let me put that back and the other big stand I have is of my favourite character from Colin Malice. This is Okazaki. I think he's got a bit of a um, sort of divide in that some people adore him and other people really don't for kind of reasons that I totally understand. My best friend really doesn't like him. <laughs> I kind of predicted that before she even, you know, finished his route. But it was kind of funny because she was like, you're right, I hate him. <laughs> But I think he's adorable because he's a bit of a, what we call, hushigi-chan or tenren. So someone that's a little bit odd, like for example, mozu from Buster Fellows. And tenren is a term we use for those who are a little bit head in the clouds, but like in a funny way. So, you know, it's, it doesn't mean that person is stupid because you get people who are really smart, but like their common sense is a little bit off. <laughs> That's kind of what a tending character is, and he's like that. And this one's cute because the base is of a um, cat. Sorry, it's a little bit dusty because it's been like sitting there for a while. But um, yeah, it's a little cat because I guess I think they refer to um, the main character Ichika as like a, a cat or whatever. A point, so I guess that's why it's a cat. Now, I'm going to go through um, the non-Otome merch next, uh, just purely because, I don't know, I wanted to share these because I also got them and they're just as exciting. So first up, and you know, you're going to think I'm a child, but um, obviously I've got Sailor Moon's magical brooch because how could I say no to this, you know? Like, look how pretty it is. And you know, then I can do the moon pretty I'm joking, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> up and it kind of has this bit that opens up and you could put like it's supposed to be for mints but I think it's good for like pills and stuff because like oh my god that makes me sound like a drug addict I mean like pills like ibuprofen or paracetamol that like painkillers or in my case I guess epilepsy pills although I don't really use it to me it's just more decoration than anything but you know it is 
usable if you want to and uh yeah it's just super cute like i just could not say no to this it was so overpriced but i had to get it it was just too cute <laughs> the second one is of Yusuke, I think that's his name, Yusuke from um, Persona 5. He is my favorite male character. Um, he's also a bit of a Hushigi Chang and Tenneng, and uh, I don't know, I just, if there was a female main character, I would have been like gunning for him, if you know what I mean. And like, oh, he's just so cute. I don't know. I think this is one of those merchandise that i would probably use but i don't really have anything to put it on so it just kind of sits there <laughs> with all my other merch now they these are kind of i didn't buy these they came with the cupid parasite stuff that they ordered it's the cards that you get if you order stuff on idea factory yay booby girl cards <laughs> so not exactly atomic game merch more like Gyaruge or Bishojo games so like pretty girl games and i mean i don't mind booby girl characters i think they're cute because well they are cute what's what's not to like about booby girl characters so um yeah i'm quite happy with them i think they're yeah i look at them and like grin and look like a pervert myself <laughs> And so that's that. Next up, I'm going to go through my Shu and the Virushu merch. Um, so firstly, I'll go through what I bought, I think. Yep. So I bought the two bromides, but I also bought um, this card holder, which has like, I don't know. This is Yukasu, my favorite character, and he's got like a little crown. And I'm a sucker for things like crowns and jewels, so like I had to get it. And obviously, if I'm going to get the Ryuka stand, I'm going to get the Ryuka uh, card as well. And I really like this because he looks so cool. Like, the posing is awesome. And um, it's kind of, like, almost pearly. If you put it in the light, I can't really show you on here, but it kind of has, like, a, a pearly sheen to it. Um, yeah, that's the back. This says Ryuka. Lucas. Verge de la Fin. Era Salvation? I mean, I uh, excuse my terrible pronunciation. He's called Luca in Japanese, but I guess in English he's Lucas. And uh, this is like a little kind of thing that um, you put the card on. And it kind of stands like this. <laughs> um, and I've got a spare card just because this probably causes like a dent in it. And I want a card that's like perfect as well, so... But yeah, I really like it. This is just gonna sit there and look cute. Um, next up are the little stands. These. So this is like the final bit of uh, Versh merch that I have. But um, basically, I got lucky with these. Again, my friend had bought the limited edition but didn't really care so much about the uh, stands. So she gave me three. Um, she did ask me my preference and I told her prior to playing the game that I liked um, Anku and I really like main character merch so I decided to go for the main character and you know I think I was kind of tempted to get uh, asked for Xian or Xiang um, although he ended up being my least favorite route wise so I guess it's kind of good that her other friend was desperate for Xiang so I didn't get Xiang but I got Anku who unfortunately is not a love interest but I love his character design and I am a sucker for chibis and obviously the main character and this is the lucky one initially I was so not into Yuka I was just kind of like he just looks like a girl and I'm just not into him but he ended up becoming my favorite character i did not expect this at the beginning so i was really surprised it probably has something to do with the voice actor because i adore his voice actor um but yeah again like it's a chibi one he looks grumps and it's so cute it's adorable now i look like a creeper you know like creeping over or tummy much but <laughs> i'm just being way too grinny but um i just thought it's lucky that it happened to be Yuka that was a spare one left over. Um, so yeah, cute. Um, I think that's it for the Versh merch. And so finally we get to the Cupid Parasite merch from the Western Idea Factory. Now, I'm not gonna lie, 
when I saw pictures of the Cupid Parasite stand, I was like, oh my god, it's ugly, it's huge, it looks cheap. Like, because pictures of it were going on Twitter and I was like, I can't believe I'm going to receive these. Like, I dislike them so much that I was like, what do I do with them? Do I give them away? What do I do? But now that they've arrived, I'm pleasantly surprised. Like, this is what they look like. They they are still bloody huge. Um, but the thing is, the reason why initially I wasn't so fond was because I thought, firstly, I thought it would be like this size. And then secondly, I thought these gems, like these would be actual gems, not just squares. So when I saw the picture, I was like, okay, if I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna have to like put stickers on it. <laughs> of like real gems and I'm sure some of you are like horrified by the thought that I'm like altering and doing DIY on merch but like that's just me if I don't like something I'm gonna convert it because the thing is like this merch isn't like this is my stuff I'm not planning on selling it or anything so to me it doesn't really matter if it gets all messy and stuff but like at the end of the day I ended up really liking it I thought it was really cute and I'm just like so glad because honestly I was thinking oh, I'm gonna have to get rid of it or just you know because it's taking gonna take up so much space the base is like this it has Cupid Parasite and it has Lynette on it and I guess so it says do you want to get married and I think I think this is either her room I think um I mean who the hell has do you want to get married written in their room but like I won't I won't comment on that it's either that or the build I think it is her room though Again, I don't know why you would put, do you want to get married on your wall in your room, but whatever, it's an Otome game, it's not real, so. <laughs> and this is the little charm that comes with it. I think some people were unsure in that they thought this was going to be like this big, if you know what I mean. Um, but this is a relatively reasonable size in that it's kind of like the same size as you get in the limited edition uh, merchandise, you know, the to be stands. So it's kind of like a similar size. I think they've done a relatively good job. Like you don't get this sort of thing. Like I haven't seen something so big and like over the top like this, which is very Cupid Parasite. But I haven't seen something like this in Japan. So it's quite different. When I showed my Japanese friends, she was like, wow, that's, that's grandiose. <laughs> like, she was so surprised. Um, but obviously I got Cupid and the person that I think is meant to be for her, which is Alan. Um, okay, let me, let me take some of this off and I guess Cupid Parasite is a game so so this actually came with a, a screen for like film to protect it um but Cupid Parasite is about a game where you've got Cupid who uh is well Cupid and she's having trouble because she keeps on firing her arrows at people who should in theory get along and the issue is the arrows keep them in love for I think it was 20 something days or like I not not long but long enough that you'd expect them to have gotten to know each other by that point and like you know potentially or hopefully get married now the issue is the god of marriage has gone missing somewhere I think I think that's what happens um so there's no one that like finalizes them together so like marriage rates are dropping like crazy and her father thinks that it's all her fault so is constantly telling her off and he's like super traditional and stuff and it's a nightmare uh, one day Cupid discovers of things like Cupid Corporation where humans you know match make themselves and she just realizes she notices how um sort of evolved humans have become and uh so she decides she wants to go down into the human world and match make as a human now this angers her father tremendously um, because he's so traditional he looks like what you'd expect a god to look like and this is so difficult to peel off <laughs> let me try this way um but yeah so he gets really mad he's completely against it but Basically, she sneaks out and gets down into the human world to live 
like learn how to um, learns like the science of love or something and then manages to get hired by Cupid Corporation and the whole story is about her having to her trying to prove to her father that she can climb up the ladder and match make better in the human world without her powerful bow and arrow if you know what i mean um god this is so difficult to take off come on let me take it off <laughs> there we go um anyway so she does that and uh this whole story is about her being offered a promotion if she manages to match make the Parasite Five, which are five guys who are absolutely hopeless. Uh, they all have their problems. You've got the thieving Parasite, which is Alan, um, who only likes girls if they're already taken. You've got Rao, who is the obsessive Parasite, who he's obsessed with like Greek and Roman mythology and stuff, and he won't shut up about it, and uh, which makes matchmaking difficult, even though he's an action Hollywood star. Um, yeah, it's quite a shame, really, because he's so good looking, but hey, and the thing is, he's not actually interested in getting married, he just wants to learn what it's like to fall in love, because he's going to be starring in a romance, like a rom-com soon. And then you've also got uh, Shelby, which is a CEO of Cupid Corporation, but the thing is, like, he only wants to get married because... He's not married, people think he's married and thinks he's like in a happy marriage and that that's part of the reason why they enroll into the matchmaking system of Cupid Corporation. So learning that he's not married may cause stocks to decrease and like trusting issues and all that. Um, but he never turns up to anything and all the women are obviously like, well, we kind of want to know what they're like and meet with them before we get married. But he doesn't allow it, so that's a nightmare. You've got Gil, who's a lovelorn parasite. He's still in love with Lalette, and no matter who she introduces, he's like, oh, but she's not quite this or that, because all he can think of is Lynette. It's a nightmare. And then you've got Luki, who is the glamour parasite, who is unable to see people who are ugly. <laughs> and he's just so mean, like, in so many ways, but for some reason, I don't mind him too much. Um... But yeah, so I showed you uh, Lynette. This one is of Alan. He is... I don't know. The reason why I decided to go for Alan is because out of all the roots, I personally felt like Alan and Lynette belonged together more than the other guys. So that is kind of my reason. I'm not saying that's the right thing, as in like I'm not saying it's canon or whatever. I just think that for me, personally, once I went through his story, I was like, no one else it should be with Lynette. <laughs> like, their love story was just so beautiful. But yeah, and the base for his shows his pillow stool because he owns a stool that um, sells luxury pillows that really help with uh, people go to sleep. So this goes in here. I guess it would be more like um, so it's like that, but you know, it. I like it, but also it's huge. I didn't think it would be this big, and um, I mean it's huge. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna end up basically having them like this with uh, my switch like in between, so they'll be like <laughs> book stops. Um, they are really cute though, I'm ha like pleasantly surprised because honestly when I saw pictures online I was like what have I gotten myself? Like, I, The thing is I don't like buying stuff that I don't want because I feel guilty throwing it away or giving it away. I guess giving it away I don't feel as guilty but throwing it away I feel like guilty and I just yeah but I like them so whew, thank god. Now. Last but not least, and this is going to make me look like a complete perv and creep, but I don't care because I'm really happy with it. <laughs> but yeah, last but not least is a cushion of Alan Melville. So now I am officially part of the Otome Otaku Club. <laughs> I can like creep and like hug this like 2D husbando. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, no, I just... 
The thing is, I couldn't not buy this because it's a pillow with the pillow seller who is cute on it. Like, how can I say no to that? If you know what I mean? Um, so I had to get it. And I really like this design. Honestly, to begin with, I kind of was a bit torn between him and maybe Shelby or something. But I just felt like purple is kind of my purple. And this, this like red um, color is my go-to color. It's like my favorite. It's got like pink on it. And yeah, I just, I just really like it. So, and it's really comfy to hug. <laughs> But no, I still think it's really cute. It's great decor, um, especially as someone who is obsessed with Otome games. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's so cute. I just really like this design. <laughs> you can probably see the hype and the creepy smile on my face. But anyway, I'm going to leave this uh, video there because now I have finished showcasing all of my Atomi game merch. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this show and tell video. You are still watching and not bored out of your mind from looking at all the different things. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And hopefully I'll see you in another one or one of my streams. Bye. Thank you. Anna says bye too. <laughs> bye.